Hi, my name is Jeanette Bradley and I am the illustrator and one of the co-editors of New Voice Too Small. Today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about the illustrations in this book. New Voice Too Small is an anthology of poems about real-life young people who have made a difference in the world. Um, each one of these stories in a little poem format is a miniature biography. A biography is a story about a real-life person. And accompanying those stories are pictures, and the pictures are portraits. A portrait is a picture of a real life person. Uh, it's not a, necessarily a photograph, it could be a drawing or a photograph or a sculpture, uh, but usually when you use the word portrait rather than just a picture that you took of somebody else, um, it's something that is thought out to show a little bit about the person's personality or their history or show one side of their life story. So the pictures in this book are all researched and thought out to show a part of this young person's life story. Here's some famous portraits. You might recognize some of these. The first one is a portrait of Queen Nefertiti from ancient Egypt, probably one of the oldest paintings of a real person that still survives today. The next one is the Mona Lisa with her mysterious smile. And the last one is President Barack Obama's presidential portrait from just a few years ago. In each one of them, you can see that the artist has given some clues to the person's life, the place and time that they lived, and perhaps a little hint of their life story. In my portrait of Jacelyn Charger, I also give some hints to her story. If you look in the background, you will see that there is a river. It looks like one river, but actually it's my hint of two rivers that I've been thinking of in Jason's life might connect. So first I researched the location where Jason first started her activism, which was Standing Rock. And I actually wasn't familiar with Standing Rock or what it looked like. So I had to look up pictures of it and I found this beautiful landscape that's dominated by this twisty, tw this twisty river full of oxbows. And I also saw pictures of the camp where people had erected teepees and tents and had their trucks and horses and all sorts of things that people were living in while they were attending this protest. And I incorporated those into the background of the image. And then the second part was a little bit closer to home for me because I once lived in Washington, D.C. But living there, I understood that Washington, D.C. is also shaped by rivers. The Potomac and the Anacostia River cut through the city and they shape everything about how things are built in the city. And so I wanted to tie these two places that were really important in Jason's life Standing Rock, where she began her activism, and Washington, D.C., where she actually ran across the entire country from Standing Rock to D.C. in order to speak to people in Congress about what was happening in Standing Rock. And so you can see that I have incorporated the river here, and I wanted to show that it was Washington, D.C., but I also want to talk about how in illustration, communication is more important than it being absolutely strictly realistic. So if you look to the left, there's an aerial photograph of what Washington DC looks like from the east looking west up the Potomac River. You can see the Washington Monument is very tiny in the background, much too tiny for someone to see when they're looking in the background of this picture in a book. And so I made it much larger than it is in real life so that you would get a sense of how this landscape tied to the other landscape and how rivers and the importance of water in all of our lives is what motivates Jason to do her activism. And now I want to talk a little bit about what you can do for a portrait. Self-portraits can be a lot of fun. They don't have to be a boring picture of just your head. They can incorporate all sorts of interesting things that show who you are, what's exciting or interesting to you, and the things that you like to do. So here are some famous self-portraits in which these artists are telling stories about themselves, which can be even more interesting than looking at a painting of an artist telling a story about another real person. So we're going to do a project called Meet the Artist. Lots of cartoonists like to do this. It's a way to introduce themselves to readers, and it's also just a fun thing that, art, that artists do to share pictures of themselves on social media. 
So this first picture by Elizabeth Montague shows that she likes to hike, she loves apple juice, she draws on her iPad, draws a little cartoon of herself in her style that she uses in her work, and we kind of get a sense of what she's like from this drawing. Here's some more examples. These ones show that a lot of these have uh, likes and dislikes, and uh, you know sometimes people will put like what's in their backpack, or they'll share other little tidbits about themselves. And this last set shows that many artists, when they're drawing a self-portrait, show themselves doing something that they love to do. And that's one thing that I tried to do in No Voice Too Small. I tried to show each of the activists doing something. A lot of them speak out, and that is their form of activism. But I also wanted to show a sense of the actions that they took. And so I tried to work that into all of the drawings. So here are some self-portraits of two other artists, Lorian Tu and Mike Petrick, and it shows Lorian skateboarding and Mike grilling, and it shows some of the things that they like to do. And I'd like to challenge you to do a Meet the Artist cartoon. There's a form that you can use, or you can just do this on any piece of paper that you have at home. And to inspire you, I'm going to show you a little bit of my own process of drawing one of these. So if you watch for just a moment, you'll see my drawing take place, starting out as a really rough sketch and slowly gathering details and color and starting to look more like a real cartoon. And then I add in some of my likes, my dislikes, thoughts about what I wish the world would have more of and less of, and also my very silly studio assistant whose goal in life it is to make drawing more difficult. I can't wait to see your Make the Artist cartoon. Have fun drawing, and thank you so much for joining me today.